by the grace of Christ. Let's go to the Gospel of Luke. Something. The Gospel of Luke. Chapter 15 and verse 11. Gospel or according to Luke. Um, chapter 15 and verse 11. It's the, st the parable of the prodigal son. Then he said, A certain man had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. He divided to them his livelihood. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there he wasted his possessions with prodigal living. And when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in the land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to the cities of that country. He sent him to his fields to feed swine. And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. And no one gave him anything. When he came to himself, he said, How many of my father hired servants have bread enough and to spare and to spare and will perish with hunger? And will arise and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and before you. No longer words that be called your son. Make me like one of your higher servants. And when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion, and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and your son. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring out the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet. And bring the fatted calf here and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this is my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. He they began to be merry. <coughs> now his older son was the field. As he came and drew near the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. He said to him, Your brother has come, and because he has received him safe and sound, your father has killed the fatted calf. But he was angry and would not go in. Therefore his father came on and pleaded with him. So he answered said to his father, Lo, these many years I have been serving you. I never disgraced your commandment at any time. And yet you never gave me a young goat that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as the son of yours came was has was devoured your lively with heartless, you killed a fatty calf for him. He said to him, Son, you're always with me, and all that I have is yours. It was right that we should make merry and be glad, for your brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. Imagine now. The sorrow of the father, and as the uh, the second son sometimes is also more spoiled, even though there is no impartiality to the heavenly God. Imagine when the younger son, father, divide your and give me what belongs to me. But the father he knew what was coming next. He never told him. I didn't tell him no. What are you saying? He never grieved him. He never. He n he never got angry. Why? Because he loves him. 
he believes. And whatever happens, he hopes. Unless, because he's going to leave. Because God has made a decision, in this case, whatever, as the father, whatever his son decides, that's what he al he's going to allow him to do. Because that's how God um, uh, behaves. That's how the prerogative that God has given to people to give them the full freedom of and the consequence of their actions. He doesn't prevent them, like Abraham, to do what he wants to do. This is why God loves Abram. God has God has esteemed Abram so much higher than other people as a man of faith, love, and hope. He has these three characteristics. He hopes in God. He loves God. He loves his people. He didn't he didn't marry another wife. He only had one wife. After after he became a widower, though, he married. He was a special person. Lord also was a special person. God gave him many chances as he revealed his love to return. He gave him many chances. He saved them. Lot never returned. He insisted on his belongings. And the gate of Solomon Gomorrah. And now, let's return to the sorrow of the father. What are you thinking? He didn't ever say anything like that. When the younger son gave me the belong what belongs to me from your property, he said, "Yeah, sure, I'll give it to you. No objection from the father." And the word of God exhorts us to become imitators of God and walk likewise. Whatever they ask you, do it. Humble yourself. And God will lift you up. Don't don't seek from other people. If you want, if you want to have the personality of God and and the, and the personality of the Father, which is the Lord Jesus Christ, don't complain. Just love. Believe in God. In hope in God. How do you know what God is going to do? God cannot do anything. when there's a problem between man and man and a problem between God and man. You cannot do anything. He took what belonged to him, been rich. What is that that brought separation in the heart of Lot? Because the heart, in the heart of Abraham there was never separation. In the heart of Lot was greed in the heart of the younger son 
was the enjoyment of symphony. It was the fleshly attitude. Let me have a good time. Let me have a good life. Let me go experience other circumstances. Always here in the house. The father always here in the fields with the father. Will always be with the father. See him alone. And he left him. And he went. And the scriptures say. And after a few days. And there he wasted his property uh, prodigally. And once, once he wasted everything, and once he didn't have any progress, Then there was greater hunger. And I wonder why the g word of God is asking us to say that. In the foreign land, there is hunger. In sinfulness, there is hunger. There is famine. There is a person does not live by bread alone, but by every word, by the m word of the, the mouth of, of the Lord. There is hung, there is, there is failure. There is affliction. Thus, let us watch where we're going. Let us, let us be watchful what do we choose. God is never going to deny us our choices, but let us watch ourselves. Where do you go? Why do you go? What do you want when you're going? Why are you seeking where you're going? Don't you like it where you are? In the presence of the Lord. Harsh, but there's something, uh, there's something different, which in the beginning looks good. You know what a good time I'm having here. You know where you're gonna end up. You know what a good time. I you know what kind of affliction is coming. May God preserve us, dear brethren. The Word of God says. Let us not destroy the the old the older ancient limits, and for us the ancient limits is the right uh, of uh, dividing and interpretation of the word of God. We are free to go and everywhere we want. We are free. Don't get out on, on the limit of your father. There is hunger. There is there is pain, sorrow, dead ends. And the father knows this. I didn't tell him anything. You know what's gonna happen where you're going? You know what's gonna happen, Lord? He left him. Where do you want to go? You know what awaits you. Don't leave the house of the Father. Wherever that is, Nisha, 
issue is not whether I go or do not go. What is it you want in your life? The, qu the answer to the question is, what do you want in your life? There is the answer of the Lord Jesus Christ. Seek first the kingdom of God and gives you righteousness. And all the other blessings, God is going to add them to you. God didn't say seek. And how would I find it? the kingdom of God? Where do you find, where do you seek the kingdom of God? To find them. Where? Where do you look to find the kingdom of God? Where do you look for it? What is it you want? And then came disaster. Famine. Dead ends. Bondage. Like the bondage of sinfulness. Because he didn't have anything to eat. He was looking. He found somebody. He found somebody from the citizens of that remote land. He attached himself to him. And that person sent him to shepherd shepherd pigs. Who? The son of the father, the younger son. He sent him, he joined himself with his country, he sent him to f in his field to feed swine. He gladly would have filled his stomach with the pods of the swine ate and no one gave him anything. And then his aunt came. His father knows everything. The father does not go to him. He's waiting for his son. God is waiting for us. Abram was waiting for Lot, but Lot never returned. Look where God has led him. He didn't lead him to his uncle. He let him, let him Why didn't lead him to Abraham? Why didn't the angel why didn't the angels take Lot to bring him back to Abram? Or God doesn't take a person to a place where where he doesn't want to go. God takes a person. where he deserves to go. Because in the end, you deserve what you want. And what you like, that's what you're going to enjoy. And what you like, this is what God is going to lead you in the end. God pulled Lot out of Son of Gomorrah because his righteous soul was afflicted over there. But he didn't take him over to, Ab to uh, Abraham. And then came great sinfulness. And then he came together with his daughter. The Ammonites and Moabites came out of that union. Wow. The fruit of Abraham was Isaac and Jacob. But what the, l what the Lord Jesus Christ is teaching, he never came to his center. 
He never thought, what am I doing here? What am I doing here? Why do I want here? He never thought. He never considered how happy he was when he was next to Abraham. The wife Lot. Yeah. Her heart was oriented toward belongings and material possession. But the wife Lot was a person who desired. She desired what she was doing there with Solomon Gomorrah. Turn around to see disaster and uh, disaster what was happening and what she loved and she perished. But Christ Himself gives a solution to this this challenge of this. Remember. Like he says in Epsa. Remember from where you've fallen. Look where you made, where you made it. Look where you're gonna make it. When he made it to the end of all, of all things, as he was. He never thought of his heart he was just having a good time. But the uh, hunger came and it's going to come no matter what. Time is going to come if you are, you end up where you want to instead of where God wants you to be. And Abram, he made a decision of death. I'm going to return to my father. I'm make me like one of your servants, you know, to be able to make me like. Well, thank the Lord, dear brethren. He doesn't reveal to us the course of the younger son. He reveals to us the love of God the Father. The Father, when He let them go, He never left, allowed them to go, to go. He never forced them to come back. At some point, as the Father was waiting there, He saw at some point His prodigal son coming back. What is the image now of his second son? He saw somebody coming back, smelling swine, w sin, near death. This is the solution. This is the conclusion of a person who does whatever he wants to. Smell like pigs. Despair. But his future is marvelous because his father loves him. His father ran and kissed him all over. And he said to him, Welcome. He embraced him. Welcome. I was expecting you. Lord, we thank you. Imagine the heart of the father when he said to him, he said, I'm leaving. There was sorrow, despair of the father. He never, never told him what you're doing. Do whatever you want. That's what he told him. You're free. I made you to be free. I made you to be free. Oh my God,
It was full of joy. Bring here the greatest attire. Put the shoe. He returned. And slaughter the fatted calf. And today for us, for us the sacrifice of the fatted calf is the Lord Jesus Christ. Because God sacrificed his son for the prodigal son to return to him. The son is praising. And now there's the other person. The other son now. He never was one with his father. It was like Lot. They were living in the same house, but they were never one. This is why the younger one left. He was never one in unity with his father. He didn't have a heart according to his father's heart. His counsels were different from the counsels of his father and his ways were different from the ways of his father. One of them wanted sinfulness. The older brother wanted everything for him. Hard man. We can say that he was rough. He would not tolerate anything, any compromise. He didn't. He didn't say. <coughs> he never prevented his younger brothers to leave them, but that was because he didn't love them. When he found about, when he found about the joy and all this music and the dancing, he asked on the servants and said, "What's happening?" And the servant said, your younger brother came back and your father rejoiced and he slaughtered the fatted calf because he was dead. He received him alive. And the rough man became even wilder. There are two, two categories of people who cannot be in one with the father. One who is strict, rough, who is always right, self, self justified, who tires himself, but he doesn't have a tender heart. I don't want to be that person. The other person was. Well, uh, was cunning. I'm gonna escape my father. Were one, well, they were living together in the same house, but not one with the father. And when the, when, when he heard, They heard all this joy and dancing and celebration. His father invited him to come in, but he couldn't come in. Here's not what he said to his father. Look, for so many years I've been working here. This is shocking. I've been serving you. Whatever you ask me to do, I'm doing it. Yeah. You say you're doing it, but you you don't love your brother. You, don't, you cannot forgive. Your heart is not going to try. Rough. For so many years. Serving you. Do you have any complaint? I'm going there. I'm doing everything you ask me to. I 
I never transgress on your commandment. This person can never repent. He's a wild man. He can never. He's rough. He's right. He's doing everything perfectly. Whatever his father wants him to do. I never transgress the commandment. He's got complaints on his father. He never gave me. He never gave me a young goat that I might make Mary as my friend. He's got a complaint on his, his father. He finds something and he finds a fault with everybody. And the worst. And now that your son came, your prodigal son, the one who the one who consumed your own belongings. The one who lived prodigally. What kind of person are you? You even slaughter the fatty calf. What kind of person are you? You understand what I'm saying to you? Do you understand how r right I am? For me, he didn't even give me a goat, but he, he slaughtered the fatty calf for the prodigal son of yours. But God is not man. This person can never repent. He's always going to be a wild man. He's always going to laugh and rejoice only when it happens what he wants to happen. He's never going to want with We don't see him in the enter in the house of his father. It impresses me. We never see him repenting like the younger son. Uh, righteous son. Maybe he would have felt some sorrow if he had heard of the status of his brother in his foreign land. He doesn't have affection. Then he doesn't have forgiveness. God is love. The pro uh, the uh, elder son does not have the father, and it's hard. Always at the work of God. Always serving God. Always serving God. Mm. But you, ne you never make the heaven. But the protocol song. First in heaven, at the best, the honored person. And then understand. Who's the one who is honor in the eyes of God? My servant follows me. My servant is where I am. And the ma and that servant of God is gonna honor him. Who is God gonna serve? The servant. What would the other son should have done? Uh, allow me to say, what kind of, what kind of nonsense is this? Instead of beating him for the beating the prodigal son, 
what did you do? What kind of messes are you in? Got yourself in, and you transform him instead to the honored person in the house. He has the elder brother. Is right. He's got this one. He's got a good point. Doesn't have affections. Doesn't have. He doesn't long suffer. He doesn't have love. They understood. And the word of God said. The righteousness of a person is like a defiled. Defiled. Garment. I taught this for so many years. The righteous of a person is like a dirty man. I taught this so many years and I never understood this and understood. The older son is writing his arguments, but it's human justice. And God does not like. God wants his human justice. It is clean. Was the blood of Christ. Dear brother, today let us examine not whether we resemble the, the elder or the younger son, but let us examine what God showed me. Two people. One well dressed with uh, with uh, dressed in a suit with a uh, uh, with a tie but full of oil spots the other is just a simple white shirt with just a simple attire one full very clean let us Let us be let us be intimidated by our own righteousness. I don't want my own righteousness. I want the affections of Christ. I want the p in the heart of the contrite person. I want the love of God the Father. Watch out for your own righteousness. Don't say I'm right. Forget what what you do right. I'm saying again, the whatever the elder son, uh, uh, the elder elder son is saying is right. He's but he's straight to go to hell unless he comes to his senses as he repents. Unless he says, Lord, grant me, grant me to resemble you. Make me, Lord, to have your own righteousness. What does the Apostle Paul say? I'm afraid that the devil deceives you. If you fall out of grace on the simplicity of Christ, well, what is the devil trying to do? You do everything. You're perfect. You are struggling. You're striving. But the other, lazy. Protocol. What's the difference? It's the contrite heart. It, it turns the heart of the father. The difference is, I made a mess. 
have mercy upon me. What can I say? Today is one of the most astonishing days I've had. I understood so many things. I understood so many things. When I'm right, I'm straight to go to hell. When I humble myself, if I humble myself, then Father, you're not right, brother. I'm not right. You're not right. Don't I say things right? Well, I'm worth. I never transgress any of your commandments. You're straight to go to hell. Father, forgive me. I've sinned. I'm not worthy because you son. You make me like one of. Make, make me like one of your servants. I don't want to stop speaking. I love you, brethren. But the one who loves us a lot is Christ. 